हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम बैक टू आवर आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड एक्सपर्ट सिस्टम्स लेक्चर सीरीज आई एम नादिया पटेल लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विथ आवर न्यू लेक्चर वी आर इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू इंट्रोडक्शन टू आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी गॉन थ्रू सम सेट्स ऑफ पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम द यूनिट वन एंड नाउ दैट वी हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट वॉट एग्जैक्टली द स्टेजेस ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आर नाउ वन बाय वन चेक what are different types of artificial intelligence now these types are completely based on the functionalities so if you are picking up a device or you are picking up an application which you know is artificial intelligence enabled based on what functions it performs we will be categorizing it in the types of artificial intelligence so there are basic four types of artificial intelligence the first is reactive machines the second is limited memory third is theory of mind and the fourth one is self awareness so say for example you are picking up google maps as an application based on what functions it performs we will categorize it into these four so it is possible that a device may fall under two categories or a device or an application may fall in one or more category so let us get started i hope everyone is good healthy staying strong be safe stay home so let us get started with our lecture now in this lecture we will go through the first two types of artificial intelligence which is the first one reactive machines now let us understand what exactly these reactive machines are all about when we say machines it is just not about the machines it is also about the softwares or the applications the word reactive itself tells you that it is something which is going to react so if you give a situation this device or this application or this software is going to react to it so it is purely the most basic or the primary type of artificial intelligence or you can say it is the beginner the first development when it started with some limited amount of work limited amount of tasks and this is the most basic or the primary type of artificial intelligence these types actually react to some input with some output like any software which processes some input and produces some output these machines are actually going to give you a reaction based on the inputs you give there is no learning which takes place in the first category or the first type of artificial intelligence it has got no learning involved but it does makes use of some predefined sets of data which you give it is just going to react maybe very simply speaking match the pairs when you just give a data in a miscellaneous form and we just match the correct pairs that is only it is going to perform such artificial intelligence systems do not store memories or past experiences for future actions as it is just the primary or the basic type of artificial intelligence they have not provided it with any sorts of Uh, data which is going to store some memories or store some previous experiences because when it comes to storing some things learning is associated with it when we learn or when we actually store when we recite something we store it somewhere in our memory and we use it in our future experiences so that is not the case in the first type of reactive machines it is not going to have any storage where you are going to store any memory and so there is no learning involved so when we learn we learn from our past experiences so if it is not storing any past experience it is definitely not going to learn they work only on present data these machines only focus on current scenario and react on it as per possible best action so just depending on the current scenario whatever it is they will react they will give an output based on the current situation but the output will be the best possible action taken 
now let us go through some applications of the first type which is the reactive machines so the first application was back in 1990s where IBM's deep blue system which was a supercomputer or you can say a computer device which defeated grandmaster Gary Kasparov in playing chess in the 1990s so basically this was a supercomputer which had some of the you can say qualities of artificial intelligence and uh, Gary Kasparov was uh, invited and allowed to have a game with this supercomputer and it actually defeated Gary. The second application is face detection in, a, in our smartphone cameras which puts a box around our face when it detects a face. So when you put up your selfie mode uh, on your smartphone and if you have a four to five friends around you to click pictures, it will put a box around each one of your faces detecting face. So it is just a basic mirror or the small application which just detects face, puts a box around and by far it just adjusts the brightness and lighting that's it it doesn't do much uh, much more rather than that so now let us go through the first example which is IBM's deep blue system which defeated Gary Kasparov so basically it was a device a supercomputer with a software which had artificial intelligence capabilities involved so this was a predict kind of a system so it was uh, basically trained with some training data of prediction depending on the current situation on the chess board it used to just analyze what positions the opponents chess pieces are and based on that the job of this device was to predict what move will carry make on the basis of that it was supposed to just decide what move should it make so this was completely and purely a reactive kind of example it was just reacting to the moves made by Gary and it was just working on the current situation say for example Gary made a move and the device just had decided to make another move but depending on Gary's this move it was just predicting what move the device should make and at the same time what will be the next move which Gary will carry out so this was just pure simple and uh, but not actually simple it involved a lot of algorithms to be written lot of uh, we can say cases to be written permutation combinations mathematical functions some of the statistics involved in it and based on that it used to make its predictions so it was a predictive kind of a, a device we could say but although this device did not had any mechanical arm which could actually pick up a chess piece and play or make a move so it required a re representative on its side and on the monitor it actually used to give uh, some of the instructions or you can say some of the moves so at the same time it was uh, just going through what moves Gary is making and at the same time it was predicting what move should the device take so as to defeat Gary so this was not a single game it was a game of six different matches involved in it and the two main matches were played in the year 1996 and 1997 so uh, as there were in totality 12 matches some of the matches were won by Gary and some of the matches were won by Deep Blue so who was the ultimate winner of this uh, match so I want you to go and search and read more about it and write down into the comments section that who was the ultimate winner of this six sets of 1996 match and six sets of 1997 match there was some matches where deep blue actually defeated Gary so now going through the second application of uh, reactive machines
the face detection in smartphones as soon as you put up your uh, selfie camera selfie mode or the camera on it just puts a box around detecting a face and depending on it it just adjusts the light that's it this is the simple thing but reactive it just reacts if you're taking a landscapes photograph if you're clicking uh, pictures of trees and birds and uh, or you can say scenery scene scenery it will not put a box around unless and until it detects eyes nose and actually a face now let us go through the second type of artificial intelligence which is limited memory now again the name itself is telling us that this is something which comes up with a memory now as reactive machines did not had any sorts of data storage or memory involved in them limited memory on the contrary gives you a space and some part to actually store memory so this is about limited memory limited memory in artificial intelligence is the first type that actually learns through its experiences limited memory machines can store past experiences and some data for a very short period of time now as uh, i told you that this is the little advancement on reactive machines limited memory types can actually store they can learn based on this storage but this is going to take place for a very short period of time so you are not going to retain all the data starting from the day one where when the application or the device came into existence and it started storing and learning but so far so good it is about to play a role or it is about to take a decision it will store it it will learn on the basis of it and it will predict these machines have abilities to react and to learn from the previous data ability to store previous data and or make predictions using this data for making better predictions so as reactive machines can also predict because we have already seen example of deep blue defeating gary kasparov who was a grand master so they actually work on the basis of current situation but limited memory can store this experience for a for a while and make better predictions as compared to reactive machines limited memory artificial intelligence systems have a large amount of training data as i told you it goes on learning and based on this big amount of training data it actually makes some moves or some predictions which are the best possible predictions so most of the present day artificial intelligence systems fall under this category where all of them have got some amount of memory for storage and for learning so so of some of the examples of limited memory can be fingerprint scanning machine but the ones which actually restrict some unauthorized users to come inside so i am taking example of fingerprint scanning machine attached to the doors so uh, if you have gone through some sci-fi movies and even some of the multinational companies make use of biometric machine attached to the door where entry is only allowed to the authorized person and nobody else is allowed inside so this how does this works this works with the help of machine learning and some amount of limited memory it falls under this category it makes use of the previous data you are just supposed to feed data of authorized persons fingerprints and as i told you just match the pairs it just matches identifies analyzes whether the fingerprint given is of authorized person or not and based on it it makes predictions and opens the door or otherwise it will just restrict you the second example is of self driving cars 
now these self driving cars fall under the category of limited memory now what kind of memory does they make use of now say for example if the car is driving on the autopilot mode and it is uh, about to have some obstacles like a speed breaker so as soon as it detects speed breaker it will make use of its past history or past training data like at what distance is it supposed to lower down its speed at what situations is it supposed to break just press a break at what situations is it supposed to surpass or overtake the car or the the vehicle in front of it so all these types of data is already given in the form of training data which is a very large amount of data and it is stored and based on the historic moves as well it makes some better predictions so the first example is of fingerprint scanning machine which falls under the biometric devices but these are artificially intelligent or you can say artificially smarter ones like unless the regular machines which we find so these actually come up with some smartphones as well so there are various designs and there are various structures which are present into the market and uh, finding the artificially enabled devices very difficult because you get n number of these on your e-commerce websites so i found some of them uh, i think these are by far artificial intelligent enabled so some of them were just completely making use of fingerprint some were making use of fingerprint and face detection so while reading i found many examples of artificially intelligent fingerprint scanning devices this was the basic one the other was making use of fingerprint as well as your face then it used to tally it with the data present your name your designation on the monitor and then the door used to get opened the uh, next was the door which had an attachment or which was wifi enabled with your smartphone so uh, as soon as you enter your password on your smartphone the door used to get opened so these all are artificially intelligent devices making use of limited memory the second example was self driving car as i told you the car Uh, makes use of the historic data to check what distance is it traveling are there any obstacles if there is a speed breaker involved in here it is supposed to lower down the speed and then pass it if for all of a sudden it finds on the next cross a traffic signal what predictions is it supposed to make like we do if uh, 10 seconds are remained we just buckle up and just increase our speed and try to surpass the traffic signal but which is wrong if 3 seconds are remaining still people go on so that is uh, not the right thing to do so taking those decisions and making those predictions involves some memory and this memory is given by limited memory type so this was all about the two types of artificial intelligence in the next lecture we will go through the next two types i hope it was simple and just stick to the points which i gave you on the screen out of curiosity do go and search and read for yourself and make use of the time which you have got the all the uh, the most valuable thing the time which is present near you make good use of it Thank you. I hope it was easy to